Okay, before we get to the pseudocode, this is basically, we've seen this already in the previous video. If you're given this one spline segment, and we know that the input value that we're looking for an approximation for the y, if we get the x in between this value and this value, well, then we'll use the spline, which is a line segment, here to compute the value. If it were right in the middle, then it would be this, this value right here. So the first thing we have to do in, when I get to the pseudocode is find out which interval uh, x falls into. And then we'll use that portion of the spline function to compute its estimate of the y value. And sometimes I use sometimes I use the t-axis, sometimes I use the x-axis. Since t's are on this axis, that means I would call my ordered pairs t comma y instead of x comma y. So once we locate it to this, all we have to do is plug that x value into the correct spline function, which happens to be defined similarly to all of the other ones. It would be yi, which is this height, because uh, ti, yi is this point. Yeah, maybe I'll write that in. And then this would be t, oops, ti plus one, y, i plus one for that point. <clears throat> so we plug it in, we get y, i plus the slope of this line segment, which is m, i defined in a second, times x minus t, i. X minus ti is just the distance from wherever x is to backwards to this ti. And this is good for all values of x in between ti and ti plus 1. And then the slope is, of course, this y minus this y, this height minus this height minus this t value over this t value minus that t value. So this is rise over run. Okay, so let's get to the pseudocode. Well, the pseudocode for the degree one spline interpolation. So the only inputs we have are n, which is not the number of data points, but the number of intervals. So if we have n intervals, that means we have n plus one data points going from the x values go from x zero to xn. <clears throat> Anything in squiggles, I just made that my comments. Then we have a bunch of ordered pairs. So this is TIYI, <clears throat> where I goes from 0 to N. So that's N plus 1 ordered pairs. So we have um, in the comments, I put N plus 1 data points, where we are assuming that the T's, TIs are in increasing order. If they were in de decreasing order, I would have to make a little tweak to the pseudocode, but we're always going to use increasing, um, an increasing order. <clears throat> X is the input value. So we're going to return a Y value, S of X we'll call it if S is the spline, um, corresponding to this X value. All right, so now we're going to get to the logic. First, we have to figure out which spline segment to use. And how are we going to do that? Well, the best way, I think, if you have your spline that looks like this, um, I'm going to go backwards. And let's say the x values are 1, 2, 3, 4. And I've got an x of, say, 2.5. Well, I'm going to start and go backwards. 3. Is 2.5 greater than 3? Nope. Continue. There. Is 2.5 is greater than 2? Yes. That tells me I'm going to use this interval right here. And let's show the code for that. <clears throat> for i going from n minus 1 down to 0, and why am I starting at n minus 1? Well, we're assuming the point is to the left of this last one. So I'm not going to see if it's greater than this number. Actually, we'll address that in a minute. So I'm going to go, the first thing I'm going to do, like with x equal 2.5, I'm going to check this one. Is 2.5 greater than this one? No. Is it greater than this one? Yes. That's why we're starting at n minus 1. So we're just saying, if my x value happens to be bigger than 
remember these are my TIs. This would be the fourth TI, this would be the third one. Um, if X is greater than this one, it's greater than or equal, it's not. If it's greater than or equal to this one, it is. So for this example, it would happen when we got to down to two, down to this point. So as soon as X is greater than or equal to TI, when we're going backwards in the TIs, then save that value of I, we'll call it II, call it whatever you want to in your code, and break out of this for loop because you're done. So if you wanted to, you could put a little end. That's the end of the for loop. I'll put it in squiggly brackets there. That's just a comment. And now we're ready. We know which segment to use. So now I'm going to return, I'm going to compute S as being what? Well, if you go back to that formula, it's going to be Y, I, I, plus a, um, a slope. I'm going to do the X minus TI first, get that over with. And now the slope, which will be the Y, I, I minus Y, I. Because we're in interval i over x i i minus ooh that needs to be not i i i minus one x i i minus one and that's the value you return so I'll, I'll go ahead and say return s as if it were a function and you're actually returning that value but all you're going to do is print that. You're going to print out S. Okay, so now there are a couple of cases that you have to take care of. Um, I kind of alluded to one of them a minute ago. So remember, these are my T values. And pretend like it's just, let me, let me start it at zero. The first one is a zero, then a one, two, three, four. Made it really easy. So if you were... If, I, if my x were equal to 2.5, we'd go, okay, which it? Actually, I didn't do that very well at all, did I? My segments would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <clears throat> that was only putting the, the numbers on the bottom, on the bottom points. Okay, so now if I had a value of x point 2.5, I would go. Still did it wrong. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. This five corresponds to that, four corresponds to that, and so on. I would, get, I would say, okay, go backwards until I finally get to one that 2.5 is greater than, greater than or equal, and it would be this one. And then 2.5, I need to return a number that looks just like about that height. Well, Suppose instead of x equals 2.5, I said x equals 7. You need to handle this too. How would you handle that? What makes sense? We have no data points beyond t, uh, time, I'll call it time, 6. So what are we going to do? What makes sense? Well, you go out to 7, just continue this line and use that height. So use the slope from your x val from this to your x value of 7. Continue this and that's how you'll get your y value. And guess what? I think we get that for free. <clears throat> I think we do. Let's see. I think we get that for free. Think about it. This is the, this is seven. And let's see, we don't have that, we don't know, you know, we don't have any data beyond that. So the first thing it's gonna check here in this for loop is, is my number x greater than or equal, is my number of seven, is it greater than or equal to five? It is. And we just get it for free. You'll need to verify that, but because that's going to be one of my test cases for when I test your code. But I think you don't have to do a single thing. On the other end, though, 
you'll have to do a little if statement or you'll have to do something. Suppose I say <clears throat> my x is equal to negative 1. Well, in that case, this logic won't get it. It'll, this would never be true. I'm going to go from here, 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 here. Um, right, this, none of, negative one is not bigger than this, 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 or this. This will never happen. So what we need to do in the negative one case is just extend this segment farther to get the estimate. So all you'll need to do is put in a little, a little extra line of code. Um, well, let me tell you what you need to do. If, what is it, x? x is less than t0, that's never going to get, that's never going to catch. So we'll never compute ii. Then, what's s going to be equal to? I think it's just going to be the same thing as if it were in between here. So you're going to get y0 plus m0, whatever that slope is, times x minus t0. That's the equation of this line. So it, it's exactly the same thing in where m0 is y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0. So it's the same equation you're using here. It's just that this pseudocode won't catch it. So I think there's a way that we could, um, actually I should have used t1 minus t0. You'll need to test this, but I think all you need to do is say, after you go through all the way for the, through this for loop, when i is equal to 0 and this fails, that means it's, it's failed every single time from n minus 1, n minus all the way down to 0, you do the same thing, you, this line, as if i, I were a 0. So it might be that all you need to do is set i, i equal to 0 here, and it might work just beautifully. I think it will. That might take care of all of these special cases. So anyways, here's your pseudocode. Good luck.